I'm Angela Kirky, I'm your Director of Education here at PPA, and today we get to talk to Allison Tyler-Jones about something that's really, really important. So one of the top things that all successful people do, and that's reading books. Allison, thanks so much for joining us. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I, well, you know, you're known for this. You're known for your book lists. And I see this on Facebook all the time or through friends. They're like, what's Allison reading? <laughs> what's she doing? <laughs> you know, and so, so I thought that would be such a great thing, you know, as we're going through all of this stuff right now, um, while people are at home and they have some time on their hands, um, to just chat with you a little bit about some of the books that you're reading and maybe, maybe starting just by talking about what's your, what's your daily, what's your daily life look like right now in the midst of all of this? Well, I think like everybody else, you know, it's been turned upside down and we're all just trying to make sense out of it and, um, you know, do the best we can. Uh, but it has, you know, speaking of just reading, it has definitely kind of uh, changed my, my normal daily routine. You know, my normal daily would, routine would be, I would get up in the morning, I usually get up and work out at like six o'clock-ish, uh, and then um, I'll... Uh, try to read some kind of like scripture or something that can give me, you know, just kind of a wider perspective to kind of set me up for the day. I don't do it every day. I, my goal is always to do it every day, but I, I don't usually always make it, but that's my goal. And then, um, you know, as I'm getting ready, I might listen to a podcast or I might listen. I love Audible. So I have, I'm a big Audible fan. So I'll have, uh, and then like my husband gave me the new AirPod pro, you know, so they have like the noise canceling so you can blow dry your hair whilst listening to a book. Nice. Yes. Which is so <laughs> awesome. Um, and so I'll have a book. Usually the, aud the audible books for me are usually not fiction. They're usually some kind of either personal development or business books. And then I'll continue with that in the car on the way to work. Um, I also, yeah, anyway, and then, you know, work, and then listen on my way home. My husband and I both work in the business together, but we drive separately because I have to be able to listen to my books and he wants to listen to bad eighties music. So we need to be separate. <laughs> so, um, and then, then, you know, you have your normal, I have a normal evening routine and then but that's how I go to sleep at night is I usually will read and I can't read a business book before I go to bed. That needs to be fiction to kind of quiet my brain down. So enter COVID, the whole world has changed. And so there's no schedule, there's no whatever. So I'm actually finding that I'm much more drawn to the like scripture, like reading that in the morning, because that really does mentally, the mornings that I do that, I'm just better <laughs> and I'm more centered and just less fearful. And then um, at night, I'm, I, I realized like for two weeks, I haven't really been able to read um, because um, I've, you and I are friends, so you know that like, I don't watch the news. I haven't watched the news for like 10 years, but now with all this going on, it seems like that's all I'm doing. So I'm at 10 PM, you know, from like yeah. eight 30 till midnight, I'm just like on my side, like scrolling through Instagram and then CNN, Fox news, BBC, like all the Apple news. I'm like all the apps running down all the rabbit holes and then like slowly getting more and more and more freaked out. And then looking at like, oh, on Instagram, like she's organizing drawers and like having wonderful experiences with her children. And I'm over here like, ah, it's getting, the world's coming to an end, you know? So, um, but I realized, you know, it's all, it's all perception and not necessarily, it's a slice of reality, right? right. So I, I decided this last week, like, okay, I gotta find something to read at night that is not the news. I just need, a book to read and that has to be for me that needs to be brain candy fiction like it cannot be a treatise on pandemics you know throughout the ages <laughs> you know like that cannot happen in my world I, I might read some of that but that's going to be earlier in the day it cannot be before i go to sleep because then i'm going to dream about it i need something like um oh hang on i'll tell you what it was i just finished it it was um just a second and yeah, I read, I, I'm, all, I'm all on the Kindle app on my phone now. So that's everything. Okay, so I read this one called Dear Wife, which, you know, I think I like have mental problems because I literally can hardly remember. But like, uh, yeah, so this, this woman like runs away from her abusive husband, but then this husband's trying to hunt down the woman. You're like, is it the same woman? 
and it's kind of all in Atlanta. You need to My read question it. is, that's light, light, lighter reading? Yeah, but it's thriller because it's like, okay, I'm not being abused by my husband at this moment. I mean, you know, it's early <laughs> days into, the, into quarantine. That could still happen. You never know. I don't, anyway. Um, and, um, but yeah, you know, like thriller, like thriller, yeah. killer, yeah. you know, that is actually relaxing to me because I do have a dark side. It's like uh, Jack Reacher, you know, like when he's sitting in a bar and thinking about how he's like one guy against five guys, like that's totally doable odds. And he's thinking about how he's going to like crush their windpipe. I'm like, I can, I love that. I'm totally down with that. Um, so that is kind of like my shut my brain off. Um, big fan of, of Lee Child, which is the Jack Reacher series. Big fan of Barry Eisler, which is the John Rain series, who is a um, Japanese American um, hitman who specializes in making it look like natural causes. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Then I just finished that talking to strangers about, uh, by Malcolm Gladwell. And that was, I don't, I didn't feel like that was one of his best books, but I really loved the topic of it. Um, but that was, that was not necessarily super relaxing. So that was one. And then, um, yeah, and then I'm, I'm simultaneously reading Untamed by Glennon Doyle, which I love. Um, In Five Years was kind of a fun one. Rebecca Searle, she, it was about this woman that um, she's in, she gets engaged and she falls asleep. She and her boyfriend get engaged and she falls asleep on the couch the night they get engaged and she has this like vivid dream that it's five years in the future and she's with somebody else. And then she, and it was like, not just a dream, it was like she literally was transported and then she Wake, wakes up and is back in her normal life. And then all these things start happening that are putting her toward this other guy. So anyway, that was kind of like really cool. And just, I mean, beach read, you know, like brain candy. Yeah. It's not so what literature. you're saying is right now, you're just, you're just letting I'm your having rest. no judgment. I do not need to be, I, I'm not trying to be a better person in that reading space. That is just like yeah. Yeah. shut down the fight or flight, anesthetize, go to sleep. So anyway. But, um, and then, then I'm starting to think, okay, I probably should read a couple of business books. So I'm going to revisit some of my favorites, <laughs> but I just have guilt, to let that the go. The guilt set in, the guilt well, set in. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, what's the should, right? I mean, we've never been through this before and I figure, yeah, you know, yeah. everybody's trying to, to tell us what we should be doing. And I don't think that anybody can tell us that. I think that's something that you got, you got to come to on your own. So. Yeah. But books are our friends for sure. And I think whatever helps you, like for, for some people, a business book might be a way to like escape from what's going on in the world and making you feel like you have control or that I can do better in this area. But if it's something that's just making you feel like, oh my gosh, and I'm failing in this too, then just check that aside and that can come at another time. So let's talk about when you're when you're not in COVID brain. <laughs> so yes. when they when they're ready to 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 not be there, right? When yeah. we get back to to whatever our normal is going to be, um, you know, I, you are really actually very well known for your for your book lists. I feel like you put those out annually and and help people. You know, just what's new? What are you thinking about? What's helping you run your business better? Um, I see a, a stack of books there behind you. Or do you have yes. some some recommendations I for us? I do. <laughs> And then also, I was going to tell you on my um, my Instagram is at ATJ Photo. In my um, in my highlights, I have my book list. So I have like I put them in my stories periodically. So they're they're all there, and they're kind of a little bit of a mini review. But these are some of my favorite, like perennial favorites, and some new ones that I'm reading. Um, I would say if you don't read any other book this year, this this could be uh, Essentialism by Greg McCown is like the best. I read this mm -hmm. probably every six months or listen to it. It's yeah. really good because he's kind of got that like Scottish accent. Yes. So I love to listen to that. But it, this is just, I mean, I think this is a book for this time for sure. Because I think as we look at, uh, as we come through something like this, anytime you have like a tragedy or something, you know, unsettling in your life, it does make you think about reevaluate, like, how am I living my life? And am I liking the way that this is going? And I think we've had to remove so much from our life at this time. We kind of are probably going to be in a situation of what do we want to put back in? Do we want to keep working the way we've been yeah, working? Do we want to work fair. from home more often? Do we want to have more time with our family? I just think there's, you know, it, it behooves us to not waste it. Not that we need to have the cleanest closets. Like that's fine. I would be happy to have like totally dirty closets and not organized drawers and have my mind better and 
have my life be a little bit more reprioritized. I think that would be a better use of my time. Um, then just as far as like favorite, oh, then the other one that's so good is um, Carol Dweck's Mindset. Have you read this? I have not read that one. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's so good. Um, so Mary Fist Taylor had recommended this to me and I just, and she's a hardcore reader too. So we, we share books a lot, yeah. but, um, this one is, it's all the research about, you know, remember a few years ago you were hearing about like the parenting circles about like not praising your kids, like, Oh, you did a great job. You're so smart. And there was this mm -hmm. whole thing about like not praising him for that. It was more like, Oh, you worked really hard at that. Do you remember hearing yes. about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the seminal research on that. The Stanford professor that, that did all of that research. And so she's just talking about how the difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset, a fixed mindset means that like, uh, you know, if you've been raised and, and you've been praised for being smart your whole life, well then you have to protect that reputation. And you've got to be careful that you don't do anything that makes you not look smart, which might mean trying mm -hmm. something new. Right. So that sometimes because how we're praising our kids or how we're talking to ourselves or how our society, you know, uh, talks to us can actually make us be in this rigid solidified thing rather than being open to play and open to failing and open to a lot of other experiences yeah. that can actually really help us grow and so this it goes through it really is um because it's it's uh how we can learn to fulfill our potential parenting business school and relationships so she goes through all of those different um, areas and i just found it fascinating this is one i definitely will read it reread again and again Really, really, I love that. I love that whole touching on that fear of failure. You know, yes. I feel like as small business owners, we need we need that. Yeah, and so one of the quotes that I loved about this is she said, "Having a growth mindset means relishing opportunities for self improvement. How do we learn to view challenges as opportunities? Um, learning fast isn't the same as learning well, and learning well sometimes requires allowing time for mistakes. How do we emphasize growth over speed in our business and?" Right now, we can't have speed. It's impossible right. to have speed. Um, and then uh, just the importance of making time for reflection. And I, I find that that, to me, is probably the most, um, something that I'm really, that I've known for a, a years, but is really becoming more and more um, real to me. The older I get and the more, the longer I'm in business, I realize that, you know, you, you can watch so many things. You can, there's so many places to get information. There's no lack of it, right? You can read a million books, you can get, and so I tend to be a, an omnivore. I love to gather and gather and gather and gather and then get consensus and talk to Angela about what she thinks about this and talk to Mary what she thinks about this and this friend and get all the information. And so I just could continually gather, right? Mm -hmm. But at some point you gotta put that into practice Right. And so there's a point which you've gathered, you have all of these people in your head, you have all of these authors in your head, you have all of your ideas in your head. And at some point you have to got to sit down. And in fact, I just did that. You got to sit down and actually put it on, you know, paper. And that requires you to sit somewhere and just be quiet and be alone. And then think yeah. through like, how's this going to go? Yeah. So whether that's a marketing plan, you know, if it's a marketing plan, then it's not on Facebook. Well, how do I do this? Well, what if this doesn't work? And well, what if that? It's like, no, 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 no. It's not out there. It's in here. And so you've got to go, okay, I'm going to do this marketing plan. I'm thinking of doing this Mother's Day, you know, promo or whatever. And you write it down and then you're like, all right, so right now we're in this situation. So am I running a deal? Or am I celebrating mothers? Like, what's the message, you know? So I'm, list, I'm listing 55 things about that, what I want the message to be or what the message potentially could be. And then I'm crossing out the things that don't fit my brand that I'm absolutely not going to do. Like, I'm not gonna say, hey, if you buy one, we'll give you one for free. Or like, I'm not gonna do anything like that. I'm not gonna do anything that smacks of capitalizing on the current situation. I'm, you know, so there's all, you know, you can list all those things, but it just takes time. You gotta sit there. And think it through and work it through. And that's the part that we never really want to do. Right. That's the mess. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's the messy part. And then you got to come out and you've got to iterate. So then it's like the first thing you come up with is not the thing. And then you got to go back and you got to fix it and you got to do it again and again. And then even when you roll it out, sometimes it goes out there and it's crickets and then you got to adjust and then you got to adjust. So there's no, um, the thing I love about that mindset book, and she wasn't really talking about marketing, but it's just basically, are you taking the time to go in and think, well, how do I think about this? And how does this fit my business? Yeah. And why am I doing this? You know, I love that. That's such a great message. Yeah. I love, I love that. Book. And then, um, Horst Schultz is uh, excellent wins. He's the, he's the co-founder of the Ritz Carlton hotel company. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. This is really good as a, as an audio book too, because he's got that German, you know, accent. Um, I think you like accents. <laughs> I do. I, it makes it entertaining. You know, I mean, it really does, but his, uh, is an uh, excellence wins a no nonsense guide to becoming the best in a world of compromise. Um, he says that a great company understands what the customer wants, no matter what it is. Um, what excuses and rationalizations keep us and our teams from achieving our company visions. Um, and he says leaders have forfeited the right to make excuses. So basically the buck stops here and just his HR is so good. Like how he, how he deals with his employees and talks to them about what, what it is that they're doing. And we, I think we, a lot of us have heard the stories about, um, the, stories about Ritz Carlton, like, you know, they found the little boy's teddy bear, yeah, or the, yeah. the bunny or like that kind of thing. And he tells that story in there, but he, it's really more what is behind that, the, the whole philosophy that it's, it's ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. And so the first thing is that his employees are valued as ladies and gentlemen to an equal level as wow, the guests yeah. are. And, um, it just really, that, that's a, that's a really, really, really good one. And, um, then there's, I got, I have lots. Do I want me to keep going? Yeah, on? keep going. Okay. Give us some more. <laughs> um, probably one of my very favorite, and this is an oldie, but a goodie is selling the invisible. Love that book. Yeah. Um, Harry it's an Beckwith. older book. I mean, it's I, older. I, yeah, but it's yeah, great. Let me, let me tell you when it was published, 1997. So it's yeah. really, really <laughs> old, like ancient. I'm surprised that it's not chipped out of stone. Like that this is not on tablets. Um, but the thing that I like about this is if you're ADD, this is your book because his chapters are literally like, that is a chapter. Nice. And that's yes. a long chapter. That's yes. a long chapter. Yeah. Um, and I have so many things in this. So the first rule of marketing planning I, I have this note on the side. Ask this every year. Have we added capabilities or skills that suggest we should enlarge our scope to serve new markets? Should we develop or acquire related skills and capabilities, or should we narrow our scope and leverage these specialized skills and services we are developing to prospects looking for specialties? So, you know, that was that didn't really sound that good, but it, it really is good. Who is, setting, <laughs> who is setting your standards? Your industry? Oh, this is good. Who is setting your standards? Your industry? your ego or your clients. Not yeah, that's clients. a, that's a fantastic, fantastic book. Um, and wow. proof and proof that, you know, putting your clients first is not a new thing. No, no, this is really, this is really a good, like, just again, I, I, I find that good principles will always stand you in good stead. Absolutely. Anything with good principle, because how you're going to apply it is going to apply. And have we not just seen this in, like a month ago, we would market completely different to how we're going to market now to how we're going to market in a month. Yeah. So the, the times can always change, but the principles, the principles will never change. So for my principle, my, the whole foundation of my business, that my pillars of my business are built that I'm selling art. I want to have a long-term relationship with my clients and I have a long-term plan from them over the period of their family's life. So that's my whole business is built on that. That is never going to change COVID, non-COVID, you know, war. I mean, no, heaven forbid we don't want to have that, but you know, just like any, anything that's bad, good, indifferent, good times, bad times. That is the thing. I, I still want to create amazing work. I still want to have amazing clients and have a great relationship with them. And I want them to come back again and again and again. Right. To never be one and done. So, so if those things are in place, 
every single one of these books I'm reading through that lens of what I'm gleaning from any of this is putting that through that filter. So I think we were talking about earlier about sometimes when you're new to an industry or you're new to business or you're unsure of yourself, you tend to be easily influenced and you're kind of blown about by everything that comes up. Like, what is the latest thing? Like you go to imaging and you hear one person talking like, oh, I've got to do it that way. You go to the next tech, oh no, I got to do my business that way. And so you're just blown about, you know, I mean, the Bible, they would say you're blown yeah. about by every wind of doctrine. You know, you're just like everything that somebody comes up with, you're just blown about. And I think we've yeah. all, I, I definitely feel that way as an omnivore reader, I, I'll read something and you can ask my sisters So they're like, oh, okay, well, what are you reading now? Because you're now on this whole like mindset kick. Like every, everybody that says, oh, Oh, well, that's a closed mindset, you know? <laughs> so, um, but if you have a filter, if you've set that up in moments of quiet and moments of reflection and moments of really thinking about like, how do I want to be in business? What kind of person am I? And how do I want, what kind of people do I want to do business with? Then I'm going to, all of this stuff that comes at me is going to go through that filter and it's going to help me shore yeah. up those principles for my business. Yeah. I love that. You know, the whole concept of learning to think and not just, you know, listening to any one person, you know, and, and how they do things. Cause you don't know, you don't know what, what their idea of success is. You don't know their life. You don't know anything about it. So learning to actually make your own decisions, I think is huge. And also, also just being a lifelong learner, always being a person who wants sure. to, to evolve and grow. And um, I mean, those things are vital uh, to be a, a really successful business owner. Yeah. And so I love, I love that you really encourage people in that way. Um, well, as we, go, ahead. go ahead. Well, I just, I feel like that our, our entire, the way that we're educated, the entire educational system is not set up to build lifelong learners. To, to it, you know, really the first thing that we should learn as children is to love learning. Mm -hmm. Before we learn anything else, we should love to learn. And sometimes that's beat out of us by our education. It, it, it's, it, which is sad, you know, that we, and as parents, you know, you're kind of like get the grades and regurgitate the information rather than just like, yeah. do you love, do you just, are you curious? Right. You know, so to be eternally yeah. curious, I think yeah. is like the greatest gift that I've ever been given has been to just be eternally curious for sure. Yeah. If I could, if I could ask for anything for all of our, our members and people watching would be, you know, a sense of curiosity and, and wonder, yeah. you know, as we go sure. through this world. Um, do you have any other, as we wrap this up, is there any other advice you would give to our, um, to our audience just as they're coping and kind of getting through their every day right now? I would just say, be gentle to yourself and others. You know, I think everybody mm -hmm. yeah. really is doing the best they can. Even, you know, people that go on Twitter and light people up that go <laughs> on Facebook that are saying that it's fake and everybody that say the sky is falling and everywhere in between and the people that are jumping on political sides, like everybody is just trying to find certainty in a world where there is none. And, but the one thing that is certain is that we are, all human beings and we're all just trying to get our yeah. needs met and if we can just be kind first to ourselves we can't be kind to anybody else until we're kind to ourselves if we're judging ourselves we're going to be very harsh with others and sometimes we're part of the panic problem and sometimes we can be part of the solution and we will all go in and out of that i have been that i have been the the chicken little the sky is falling oh my gosh freaking out and scaring other people and then I have been in the place of being able to comfort and calm others and I think to just know that we're all going to be probably all of those people and it's okay and there's no certainty to be found except the, to just be kind yeah I love that can you before we started recording this call today um you and I were chatting and you shared with me the story about um the spoons oh. Yeah, so I listened. I uh, listened. Was listening to Brene Brown's podcast that she did with uh, David Kessler, who uh, wrote the seminal work on death and grieving with Elizabeth Kubler Ross. And uh, it, go listen to that podcast. It was probably one of the best I've listened to in the last really long time. But he was talking about a story. I don't know if it was a story or a parable or something that where somebody had a dream or they died or whatever, and they went into a room and there were all these. There, a banquet had been laid and there was all this beautiful food and it smelled so good, but all the spoons were like six feet long. And so there was no way that you could feed yourself with the spoon. So that was their definition of hell was that there was all this beautiful food and there was no way to eat it. And then 
they went to a different room and the spoons were the same, the food was the same, but the people were feeding each other. And that was the definition of heaven. And so rather than looking at what we don't have and um, thinking about how all the things that we can't do, like work and see each other and go play and, you know, some of the things that is, are there ways that we can reach out and help feed each other? Um, because in doing that, it, it feeds ourselves. And, and, but at the same time, the other part of that, that podcast that I thought was so great is he says, sometimes when you're in the middle of something, <clears throat> it's really hard to make meaning out of it when you're in the middle of it. So, but we want to yeah. get to this point where we've got it like all neatly tied up and like, oh, you know, I organized all my drawers. I had everything great. I, you know, I took all this advantage of this quality time with my kids. It's like, well, no, I fought with my husband. I treated him like a jerk. Um, I cried. I ate too much. I didn't shower as often as I should. I've got like, you know, roots, you know, but like, guess what? So does everybody else, you know, but that doesn't make for good Instagram. <laughs> you know, everybody wants like the perfectly styled shelfie and you know, that I'm, I'm more, I know that I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm working out and I'm losing weight and you know, while I'm in quarantine or whatever. And it's like, and if you are, then that's great. But I, I think we're just all just make the cookies and eat, eat some of them and maybe take some to your neighbor and, you know, Spray them with Lysol as you leave them on your front doorstep. I don't know. <laughs> There's no should to a quarantine and <laughs> to a pandemic. You just gotta live it day by day, do the best you can. I love that. And I think that's fantastic advice to kind of end on. Allison, you are always such a pleasure. You're always an inspiration. I appreciate you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.